Hello students, in this video we'll find the geodesics on a cone. So let's consider the cone. Sigma of r and theta is r cosine theta, r sine theta, r. And then what are my metric coefficients? We'll also get sigma r, that tangent vector over there, is just going to be a cosine theta, sine theta, and then one. My sigma theta is going to be a negative r sine theta, r cosine theta, comma zero. Those vectors are clearly perpendicular to each other, and so we're going to write down our metric. Our metric, ds squared, is going to be sigma r dot sigma r. That's going to be a two, so I have a two, then a dr squared. And then I have a uh, sigma theta dot sigma theta, that's going to be an r squared, so r squared. And there's our metric on the cone. Beautiful. And what I want to do now is I want to do the Christoffel symbol. So let's do so. So what will my gamma, and these are orthogonal curve linear, so I can use my orthogonal curve linear coordinates formulas. That's going to be the r derivative of the log of the square root of the r component. So it's going to be the r derivative of the log of the square root of 2, which is clearly 0. If I did a gamma r r theta, that's going to be a theta derivative of this thing. That's going to be a theta derivative of the log of root 2. Again, 0. And then if I do a, um, if I do a theta theta, right? So if I have a r theta theta, gamma r theta theta, that's going to be a negative one over what? A negative one over two r. And then the theta theta derivative with respect to r, then that's that times a two, of course, right? And then a, um, that's an r squared, rather, negative two r squared. And then a two r over here. And then it was, that's actually a two, not an r squared. So that's gonna be a negative two. So it's a negative two over the rr component, which is two, so that's a four. And then an r derivative of the theta theta term, which is a two r. So it's gonna be a negative r over two. Great. All right, let's do the theta theta derivatives. So what will gamma theta theta be? So gamma theta 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 is gonna be a theta derivative of the log of the theta component of the metric, which is gonna be root r which is zero. The gamma theta theta r is going to be the r derivative of the log of r, which is one over r. And then the gamma of theta r r is going to be a ultimately a theta derivative and there's no thetas, right? So this is going to be zero. Okay, excellent. Those are my Christoffel symbols. Again, these, I'm using the fact that these are orthogonal curvilinear coordinates. So I've done all the Christoffel symbols in a matter of minutes, just by knowing the fact that I have no mixed terms over here. So the mixed terms would make the calculations much longer, right? Let's write down the geodesic equations now. So are my geodesic equations. I'm gonna have r dot dot, and then I have a minus two over r, minus two r over two, theta dot squared is equal to zero. And then over here, what's the theta term going to be? The theta term, I'm going to have two of those terms over here. So I'm going to have a theta dot dot. And then a minus, or plus two, plus two over r. Two over r, because I have two of those terms. Two over r, theta dot r dot is equal to zero. Now the second equation can be simplified dramatically in terms of the conservation law. This equation over here tells me what? This equation over here tells me that theta, that the log of theta dot r squared, if I do a time derivative of this thing, I get zero. So I've just compactly written this equation over here in terms of the logarithmic derivative, because this is really a what? A theta double dot over theta dot, and then r dot over r times two. So in other words, that's really the logarithmic derivative of theta dot times r squared. So in other words, theta dot r squared is a constant. Theta dot r squared is a constant C1. I'm going to manipulate this first equation a little bit. I'm going to multiply by 2r dot, right? So I do that. I'm going to have 2r dot r double dot, and then minus r dot times r times theta dot squared, right? So in other words, is equal to zero. That's just modifying that first equation over here. This is more useful for us because now I want to consider another differential invariant, right? So let's consider this invariant over here. Let's consider r dot squared. Consider i, which is r squared, and then plus one half r, r, r dot squared, rather, and r squared theta dot squared over here, okay? And we differentiate i, so what's i dot gonna be? So i dot 
is going to be what? So i dot is going to be 2 r dot r double dot, and then plus r dot r theta dot squared, and then plus r squared theta dot, and then theta double dot, right? But what's theta double dot? Theta double dot is equal to negative 2 over r, so that's going to be a negative, theta double dot is negative 2 over r, and then theta dot r dot, theta dot r dot. r dot right there and so if we simplify this one of those one of these r's cancels out and one of those cancels out so this becomes two r dot r double dot and then minus uh, all of an r all the theta dot squared and an r dot and that is zero by assumption by equation number one right so i is a constant so our second equation is that r dot squared plus one half r squared Theta dot squared is a constant C2. That's my second invariant on this set. So I have two invariants, right? So as it stands, I can use these two invariants to parameterize. I have two, basically, I have a two parameter family, so I can use it to parameterize the curve. But what we want to do is we want to do a little bit more than this, right? So I want to look at the second equation over here. I'm going to multiply the second equation by 2r squared, right? So if I have a, I'll have a 2 and an r squared, r dot squared, and then plus r to the fourth power. And then theta dot squared, theta dot squared, is equal to C2 times R squared, R squared, C2, like that. Okay? Good. And now I'm going to introduce a new variable. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let, let rho be R squared. Then what's rho dot going to be? Rho dot is going to be 2R, R dot. Okay? And let me multiply by one more 2 over here, so this will turn into a 4 r squared r dot squared plus 2 and then a 2 over here okay great and so if i do this what does this equation over here become so i have a 4 r squared r dot squared that's going to be a what that's going to be a row dot squared so i have a row dot squared then i have a plus 2 and then i have an r to the fourth which is really going to be a row squared but I really have what? I really have over here, the second term over here can be controlled actually because it's really a what? It's really a theta dot r dot. So that term over here is really two. And then if I have r to the fourth theta squared, that's really c1 squared. That's gonna be a c1 squared over here. And then I have two c2, two c2 row, okay? So in other words, what can we say? We can say that rho dot, if I solve this equation over here, rho dot is going to be, uh, let's see how I want to do this over here, is going to be a 2, we need 2c2 two two rho minus, minus what? Minus 2c1 squared. And this is a separable differential equation over here, right? So I'm going to write this as a d rho over this expression over here. And of course, I'm just going to square root, right? So I do plus or minus square root of this. Like that. Okay. It is going to be a square root of 2c2 rho minus 2c1, uh, no rho there, just a two, c1 squared. A minus c1 squared is equal to plus or minus dt. Beautiful. And so now I'm going to, let's be a little bit breezy with the constants over here. You can keep track of all these constants. You don't really need to because that's all that matters at the end of the day, right? So if I do an integration over here, what are we going to see? We're going to see that rho times the square root over here. So there's a constant such that what? Such that what, when we integrate this, we're just going to get positive square root. So we're going to have a 2, 2c2 two two rho minus 2c1 two C squared to the power of 1 half when we integrate to the power of 1 half. And then if I want to do this technically correct, I need to have a what? If I differentiate, I'm going to have a, I need to have a 1 over 2 C2 over there. So when we differentiate this, we'll get a 1 half and then a 2, so this will cancel out. So I need an extra 1 half down over here, so 1 over 2 C2. So 1 over 2 C2, okay, is equal to T plus or minus a new constant C3. Okay, great. And so if we solve this for rho, what are we going to see? If I solve this for rho, I'm going to see that rho, that rho, is really what? Well, the first thing we're gonna do is multiply this by a constant. So I'm gonna say it's gonna be an a1. So I'm 
So I'm going to have an A1, constant A1, times T plus minus C3, like that, by multiplying this thing over here. I'm going to have to take that expression over there and square it, like that, okay? And we have to add this other constant over here. I'm going to call that constant over there A2, just for a constant. So in other words, I don't want to keep all these constants sort of clumping up together over here, so I'm going to leave it like this, okay? Where A1, A2 are dependent on C1 and C2 and C3. Great. And so now what was rho? So rho was really what? It was really r squared, right? Good. And of course, uh, there's this thing is going to be what? That's going to be rho. Good. And so now what will my r be? r is going to be the square root of this thing over here. Okay, so that's good. Let me make sure I got this correct over here. Um, Good, so now what's theta dot going to be? So r squared is going to be equal to this thing over here. Good. But what do we know about r squared? We know that r squared is, theta dot squared is c1, a constant c1, over r squared. So this tells me that um, theta dot is what? It's going to be a constant c1 over these other constants over here. a times t plus minus c3, quantity squared, over there y squared, plus a constant a2. Okay. So now when you integrate this thing over here, what are we going to conclude? We're going to conclude, of course, this is r squared, so that the r is going to be the square root of this thing. So we get two conclusions from this. The conclusion from this is that theta is going to be some constant b1 tangent inverse of t plus c1 over another constant b2, plus a constant, another constant, let's call it c2 tilde, so that's the form of my theta, and my r is going to be the square root of this thing over here. Then my r is going to be the square root of a1, and then t plus minus c3 plus a2 over here. And that is plus or minus for r, but r is to be plus, right? So we can eliminate that minus. So there's no minus over here, right? So there's just a plus. And that's my form for r. So I have r as a function of t, and I have theta as a function of t. And so this function of t and this function of t parameterize, again, up to constants. In order to save space over here, the constants are just floating around, but we want to keep track of the basic sort of integrated structure. The integral of the reciprocal of a square root integrates to a square root, right, up to the constants of the, up, up to linear changes of coordinates. Then that's r squared, but r squared is really one, r squared, theta dot is really one over r squared, so it's really one over the reciprocal of something plus something squared. That gives you an arc tangent, right, up to these constants over here, right? So in other words, up to the right constant, since r is the square root of time, and theta is the inverse tangent of the square root of time. So that's our parameterization. So if we can plot these trajectories for different values of constants, we'll get all the geodesics on the cone. Thank you very much.